Look at this interesting old valve that I found in my shed today. I was going through a bunch of stuff that I inherited from my great-grandfather about a decade ago when he died, and I can definitely see why he kept this. I should probably find a good use for it, because it's, it's a very nice valve. I believe this is from an old, like a tea urn or a beverage dispenser. Like, you know, like you have the tank of hot water or tea or coffee or whatever, and you put your cup underneath it and open it up and fill up your drink. Although most of the ones I've seen are the ones where you like they pull it down or, or whatever, not an actual valve. So this is pretty old. Now that might be hard to see, but it's patent 1791914, which was filed in like 1927 or so and then granted in 1931. So that's pretty, pretty long ago. And notice that it says patented and not patent pending or whatever. So this is most likely after 1931. Could probably be before World War II. We thankfully have a lot more information. It's from the Tomlinson No Drip Faucet Company in Cleveland, Ohio, I believe. Yeah, and then it goes just on the, under the patent. It's going kind of hard to. It's always so difficult to focus on Chrome. Especially how over here, they didn't seem to press it very well. A lot of these aren't. A lot of these characters aren't very deep. But yeah, so this was made by the Tomlinson No Drip Company, No Drip Faucet Company. Sorry, which is now I believe Tomlin Industries because they have they do a lot more stuff than that now, and most likely for a beverage urn. Now, whenever I was looking up the Tomlinson No Drip Faucet Company, I actually found out a couple of funny things, not really relating to them, but I mean, there's not really a whole lot of information about them. They were founded in like 19, 1911, and pretty much a boring business. However, I found an article in Water Conditioning and Purification Magazine about them. I had no idea there even was a water conditioning and purification magazine. That is, I, mean, I kind of want to, I kind of want to get a subscription to that magazine now and just see what it's about because that's kind of that's kind of interesting. It's amazing how many magazines there are. Of course, that's probably just like, that's probably just a magazine to sell new technology to different companies. But it's, I kind of hope that it'll be more interesting than that. I noticed that whenever you have it back, that's whenever it's open. And I assume it would make more sense to have it to where forward is open. I believe that my great-grandfather opened this up when he found it and maybe got it flipped around because you can see there's a mark on the threads there and mark right there and mark right there and mark right there and he probably just stuck it in his vise and popped this off to look inside. Most likely this is a bit like leaky because it looks like there's some scoring on that part that turns. That section right there. Which is actually kind of interesting judging by uh, looking at the patent. It's actually a cone shaped piece that is pressed down in there with a spring which you can actually push against the spring here. Kind of interesting. One other thing I notice is that this is actually kind of loose. Because you can you move it around a little bit before you actually start moving the other stuff. Like the um, the piston or whatever it's called inside there. Oh, it's actually kind of... seems to be pretty loose already. That's interesting. I was not expecting that. See? That's what I'm talking about. My great-grandfather most likely took it apart in that orientation to where it be open on the outside but it's very easy to get this flipped around. Interesting. Now it looks like this actually gets bigger inside of here and so it actually catches inside here. And then this looks like maybe this was crimped inwards so it doesn't let it slide out. That's interesting. I guess that would explain the slop in 
turning it, if that's the right term, the slop. Might be able to benefit from some lubrication. Probably hasn't had lubrication in like 70 some years. Most of the beverage urns that I could find from the 1940s onwards were mostly the lever valve and not the twisty valve. And so I'm thinking, well, I mean, it could just be that the lever valves were mostly domestic and then these were like commercial use because these are obviously really high quality. But I'm thinking that Tomlinson only makes like heavy duty things for restaurants and whatnot. So this wouldn't have, so I don't know, I'm, I'm trying to date this, but I'm just going to go with the 1930s. And if we can find any other information that says differently, then, then I can, I mean, whatever, it's just a valve, but then we can learn then. But yeah, I think like 1930s, maybe 1940s. Kind of hard to tell though. This. Ooh, look at that. That actually doesn't look too bad. I do find it interesting how the, what's the, like the, the nozzle or the spigot has these four little, like, teeth in it. I assume that is to help it, help the flow be more consistent or, like, disrupt turbulence or maybe add turbulence to stop it from, like, splattering or something. I really am not sure. It, they're straight. doesn't look like it's, like, because that would be interesting if they were spiraled a little bit to give the water a spin. I don't know what that would do, but these are straight. That is pretty cool. I can definitely go through and clean this up because there's some gunk in here. Looks like there was some sort of sealant used up here and that kind of just leaked down over time. Here you know, this gunk is most likely like old coffee or tea or something. I just realized that. not too bad. Okay, so now it's on, or it's open like that and off at any other orientation than back on. That's better. Oh, interesting. Now there's actually like a little notch where it kind of clicks when it's open. I'm not sure that's supposed to happen or not, but it does, so that's kind of cool. It definitely holds the pressure quite well. Now, it is odd that it's actually not that pinpointed. It actually, actually kind of sprays a bit. I wonder if that could be from those four little teeth on it. Now, it is pretty nice that the threaded side is just a normal thread size, so I can fit it with regular pipe. I don't have to worry about like it being a proprietary size. In the future, I'd like to get back into building steam engines and boilers, and I think that this could probably find its place somewhere in those projects.
I think it'd fit. It'd be kind of cool. Well, that's pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and thank you very much for watching. See ya.